In Jesus' mighty name. We ask, O oh God, that from the least to the greatest among us, you will quicken into our spirits, you will cause our hearts to understand spiritual dealings, so that we'll respond to you accurately. Bring to our remembrance the significance of every touch, every revelation, every insight, that it might become profitable to us in our journey on the path of spiritual progress. Cause them that are blind amidst us to see. Cause such as lack understanding to be enlightened. By all means, advance our cause in the kingdom journey. In Jesus' mighty name. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse number 12. And the title of my 10 minutes sermon is Profiting by the Word of God. Profiting by the word of God. A woman had a demonic attack some time ago. And when she had the attack, she woke up, searched for her Bible, and fastened it under her pillow. When she has done that, she felt a false sense of security and went back to sleep. The power of the word of God cannot be accessed just by carrying the Bible and putting it under your pillow. I heard of another lady that was attacked in the night and she woke up from her sleep and took anointing oil. No, this one is not a lady, it's my cousin. In a dream, he saw that somebody took a very hard rock and struck his right leg. And he woke up from the dream, reached out to the bottle of anointing oil he had, and applied it as a therapy, a spiritual therapy against satanic assault. Those were the things that were done in the days of immaturity when charlatans on the pulpit try to cause us to embrace another God other than Jesus. It's needful for us to understand how to profit from the word of God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Somebody asked me some time ago why we don't minister often with the anointing oil please help me tell your neighbor a prayer has no power. Tell, tell your neighbor. It is the Holy Ghost that has power. Hindus pray, Muslims pray, different kinds of prayer. What makes your prayer powerful is that it was wrought and 
forged in the very hands of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the most elementary definition of prayer is praying to the Father in the name of the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, do you realize when you start praying sometimes, maybe when your battery, your spiritual battery runs down and you attempt to speak in tongues, you yourself know that those initial ones you spoke that was dry, was devoid of the Spirit and because of that, it was devoid of power. All right? It is the point in your prayer escapade when the Holy Spirit takes over the entire exercise that it becomes an exercise of power. And there are several signs that the Holy Spirit will begin to manifest to reveal to you that your act of prayer is accompanied by enormous power. He gives some signs. All right? So prayer in itself is devoid of power except it is wrought and forged by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. The anointing oil itself is devoid of power, except the Holy Spirit instructed that it should be used. And some other times where God tells me in some meetings like that, I've not done that here before, but I've done it in some other places. I was just preaching and I saw a vision of a hand carrying a glass of water and pouring it, and I understood the message. He was saying, take water now, and sprinkle it over the congregation. And when I did that, you not you can't even imagine what happened. Demons we could not cast out before that day, just sprinkling water over the congregation. All kinds of demons started screaming and leaving people healings and deliverances. To if it was so powerful, it lasted for three hours. I was sprinkling for three hours, and it was powerful for three hours. There was a pastor there, very old pastor in the congregation. When he saw the power of the water, he took me in his car. He said, hold that, hold the water, hold it. Drove me to where his church was, somewhere in an Islamic enclave in the city of Zaria. And demanded vehemently that I should sprinkle the water around and purify and sanctify the ground. Now, if I had come up the second day and taken water, it would have been powerless because the Holy Spirit did not instruct. Prayer has no power. Is only powerful if it's forged in the hands of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to pray in tongues. Because that's, we are lending ourselves to the Holy Spirit to forge out of us utterances that have spiritual legal tender to effect changes in the spiritual realm and to facilitate the movement of the hands of God. Alright, so it's not in the prayer, but it's in the Holy Spirit quickening the prayer. Alright? That's why sometimes when we come, not sometimes, every time when we come for a prayer meeting, it's advisable for us to pray for one hour before we begin to share the word of God. At that point in time, the shift takes place and the Holy Spirit becomes the convener of the prayer. The Holy Spirit becomes the center point of the prayer. He begins to drive the prayer meeting, drive the individual prayer man, and everything becomes a powerful adventure. How do you profit by the word of God? The woman was struck in the night and she woke up in the night time and took a Bible, put it under her pillow, and she slept. With full assurance that the power of the Bible was going to defend her. But that's not how you draw power from the word of God. There are several items mentioned here. I just want to pick one for the next three minutes because we have gone seven minutes already. But the word of God is quick. I want to stop there. You know, there are many attributes that the word of God has according to the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The word of God is quick. You must have realized that the King James Version that I just read, the word quick there is ancient English which means alive. It's living. It's a revelation of the word. The Bible says that the word of God is living. It's living. 
It only becomes living in your heart when it was handed out to you by the Holy Spirit. Now, so while we're praying just now, and the best way to get the word of God to come alive is to engage prayers. Pray the word of God. Take a scripture. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Suddenly, maybe in your prayer, the Holy Spirit now hands out a scripture to you. That scripture that is handed out from the pool of scriptures is a living scripture. It's a living word. And the difference between the living word and the written word is that the written word, you can always find it in the Bible. But the living word is what God is saying at a particular time. The same kind of power that was released when God was creating is part and parcel of the living world. There are many things you can do with a living world. You can war, you can fight spiritual battles with a living world. You can minister healing to the sick with a living world. You can contend with spirits with a living world. You can find direction on the strength of a living world. Hallelujah. There are several times you are studying, studying, and studying the Bible, and suddenly a verse of scripture jumps out of the pages and glues itself to your heart and is surging forth with so much power. That is an act of, that is a revelation. That is an experience of a revelation. And when you get a revelation, the words may be the same words as it is written in your Bible. All right? The same words. But what is happening at that point in time is that the Holy Spirit and God in that instant has proclaimed that word to you. That word is not just a general word in the Bible. At that instance, that word is your word. It's your personal property. Revelation makes general things become personal. It's at that point that it's living. Now, you see, when you have a living word, the living word is so strong that it carries with it the power of preservation. After my youth service, I spent some time fasting and praying and asking God for direction. While praying, the Lord now spoke to me and said, go to Kano. Go to Kano. And when he spoke that word to me, there was riot in Kano. Everybody was running out of Kano. And God was telling me, go to Kano. I have an assignment for you in Kano. Meanwhile, when I was doing my youth service, there were several people that I was discipling who were into praying and Bible study praying and Bible study and it was becoming sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. We had Muslims join the company of people that were praying and coming for Bible study. Hallelujah. And it, I never knew that what I was doing was dear to the heart of God. And so when I left and came back and began to pray, I said, Lord, what next? He said, go back to Kano. By the time I got back to Kano, the disciples have bound themselves with a fast for 40 days that if God does not send me back, they will continue fasting. Then the Holy Spirit went in response to their prayers and gave me a living word, go to Kano. Do you realize that as part of the word, go to Kano, my protection in the time of crisis was part of that word. As part of the word, go to Kano, my provision for the direction that I'm going to, for the direction that that word um, lasts, my provision is guaranteed by Kotokano, because the word is living. Whereas you may even forget that God said Kotokano somewhere along the line. All right? Are you with me now? And then an event now happens and you experience a mighty deliverance. And then you now go back to God and say, wow. What a deliverance. Then he said, well, you are in Kano at my expense. Because I said, go to Kano. So that word 
he's still alive. Three months later, the world was still alive. Eight months later. And then a time came where because of the many things that began to happen, I was conscious of that world. That that world, and the world was efficacious for two years, four months. After two years, four months, the Lord appeared again and said, resign. Meanwhile, after two years, four months, the ministry had grown. We had massive crusades. We were gathering thousands of people, more than thousands, thousands of people. A whole field of heads were gathering. And all kinds of stuff taking place. It was so strong that sometimes Muslims will come and call you. and say, Then take you to the, their backyard and say, I heard you want to do that crusade again. And say, this is my own contribution. But I will not come. But I'll be hearing it from that small, small speaker. You face one like this. I'll, I'll hear it, but I'll not be there. And when you see me on the road, don't greet me. All right, I became that strong. And in the midst of that, I started enjoying it. Started liking the fact that God said I should go to Kano. And then suddenly, the word expired. The life in it was taken away because there was another instruction that came leave Kano. I left Kano in the height of a revival. I left Kano when, when they increased my salary where I was working. They increased my salary. And I just gone one month with this increase in salary. And then God now said, leave Kano. All right? So I left and came to Abuja. It was not as if I had an employment in Abuja. Are you with me? No employment, nothing. The great one just said what? Leave. So I left, packed my stuff, came to Abuja, then entered a three weeks fast to find out, what am I doing here? Then instead of answering, I brought you here for this and that. No, I just saw in my vision on the third day of the fast, I prayed for a crippled girl and the girl began to walk. That was what I got from three days of fasting. Then I stopped fasting. Two weeks later, I was called, you have been given an employment. From where? It was true. So he sent me to Abuja because he has already given me employment. I came three weeks before the time. So we went and did documentation and all of that. And then I went somewhere, it was a fellowship meeting, and we're in the fellowship like that, and behold, the crippled girl, female crippled girl, and I prayed for her, and she began to walk. Now, you see, God did not reveal to me, he didn't say what he, I came to Abuja to do, because that one, I will find out in due course. All right? But he told me what was dear to his heart, and that word was what? Was living. The day I met the crippled girl, I didn't pray that day. That was the Honda time that I was saying, Honda. So I didn't pray for one week. And then I met the crippled girl. There was no strength, no energy in my spirit. But the word I received when I had the vision was living. And that word was what brought the crippled girl from her state, not my prayer life. Do you understand that? For, for a long time, God kept trying to show me the difference between my prayer life and his word. His word is not dependent on whether I'm ready, whether I'm in good shape, whether I'm... Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's different from me. Okay? That was the day I knew that I could trust the word of God, the living word of God. And so when I saw a dead person once upon a time, and the living word of God came to me, that that dead person will rise again, I didn't even ask two questions. Because I've seen God speak before. I prayed for cripples. They walked. I've seen God speak before. I prayed for a blind. The person saw. Alright? So God now spoke to me again. When somebody died. And he said, we'll raise the person from the dead. That was a living word. And I acted on that word. And the person came back to life. Hallelujah. 
a living word remains valid for the duration, you know, until another living word comes in the area of direction. That previous one is still active. Are you with me now? When I got to Abuja, I was praying, and then he gave me a living word again. He said, raise a remnant for me in this generation. That one has not expired, and that one will not expire in my lifetime. And even beyond my lifetime, that living word will still be in the earth. Do you get it now? So living words have various wavelengths. Are you with me? Living words have what? Various wavelengths and various t- lifetimes. A living word can last for three days. All right? Maybe the Lord tells you, you were praying, asking for money, and the Lord said, I'm going to provide. And then a living word begins to, begins to tick on the clock. From the time that you received the word to the time that the manifestation came was three days. And during the period, the living word was alive. The lifetime of the living word was three days. All right? There's another living word that has a longer wavelength and a longer lifetime. As long as that word is still within the scope of his wavelength, he still sustains his life. When I was in Kano, I had bike accident. Or let me put it this way, the Okada man that was carrying me had a bike accident. Because when we collided, the, I, I saw myself, I don't know what happened, but I, saw, I didn't fall, I saw myself standing at the roadside. Then I saw the Okada man and the bike in the gutter. And when they recovered the bike from the gutter, the bike was terribly damaged. The angel that delivered me that day understood some physics, angles, and projections. I was just standing. That's... Then I saw myself standing. Then I saw the bike man and the bike. It was a living world. So somebody wanted to go for youth service and he ran to me and said, I'm going for service. I said, you are not equipped. Do you have a word? He said, no. He said, okay, go and fast and pray. And then he now came a few days later with a word that the Lord said, the cruise of oil shall not waste and the barrel of meal shall not fail. I said, that's a good word to go with. And then when the guy went to Imo State for youth service, he happened to be, his discipline was mathematics. And uh, you know the eastern part of the country, they have palm oil, they produce it. His experience was, from the week he came, his own palm oil that he came with, before that one got finished, a student will bring palm oil. Before the palm oil gets finished, a student brings palm oil. The time the palm oil finished was his last night. After the cruise, he poured the last oil from the cruise. It was the last night. And after that oil was poured, they didn't bring palm oil again. In keeping with the living world, that what? The cruise of oil shall not wait. For 12 months in a strange land, he didn't buy palm oil. And God said, this is the sign that I've sent you. The cruise. <laughs> but you see, the, 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 the issue is, when God gives the average believer a living word, he doesn't lay it to heart. That's the problem. Whereas God watches over it to perform it, the believer is in limbo. And I'm telling you, I fought battles in the spirit for long. If you are not conscious of something, it's not part of your armor. <laughs> you didn't hear that. <laughs> Please, may, may you not forget this one on the battlefield. 
If you are not conscious of something, it is not part of your arm. So, there are some spiritual gifts that the Bible says, sorry, some weapons of our warfare. There are some weapons that the Bible says you will take. And there are some weapons that you have to put on. Do you get it now? You are not here. The weapons you need to take are weapons that are crystallized by the Holy Spirit in your spirit. Now, listen. Are you here? The Bible says one of the weapons you need to take is the sword of the spirit. Which is the rema of God. The revealed word of God. Now, do you realize, um, Ebenezer, that when God lays the scripture upon your heart, all right, he's expecting you to take it from your heart and put it in your mouth and speak it from your mouth. But you may decide to allow the favor of that scripture to die down so much without passing it through your mouth and the consciousness of that scripture will be forgotten it is a living word it is active but you see you did not put it on so it's not part of your regalia in the face of battle so when god lays a scripture or a word upon your heart especially in the place of prayer you translate and transfer the word from your heart to your mouth and begin to release it it means that you took that which the Holy Spirit handed out to you. So there are some weapons that you need to take. There are some other weapons that you need to put on. That one, you don't remove it forever. It's on permanently. Alright? But for the sword of the Spirit and other weapons that you need to take, you, you, are, you are only given at the time of their use. Okay, are you with me now? You are only giving at the time. So you don't have a rema now. You have a rema when there's a need for one. Do you get it now? As I'm fighting, as I'm contending in the spirit, and suddenly the spirit of God hands out a scripture, hands out a word, hands out a declaration into my spirit. It is then I need it. And that's why the rema came. And just in case you need a rema, and you go to God and begin to pray and begin to pray because you have seen a need. That's why you went to God to give you a rhema. People that are not in need are not empowered by God with rhema. So the bane of the believer is that God has handed something out, but he did not take it. So is not in his consciousness. He did not declare it, so he did not, some deposits of it were not retained in his consciousness. And it goes to fight that way. That armor is not part of his regalia. Let me stop there today. That peace is not part of his regalia. So in closing, because our brother spoke much about revelation, about the word of God, so I just said, all right, let me just add this. How do we profit by the word of God? We we'll profit when we press on God to quicken his word. He will only quicken it when it is obvious that we have a need for it. And we express our need for it through desire and through desperation. And then the Lord now quickens a word and gives you and i say that every living word has what a wavelength and a lifetime please don't forget that a what a wavelength and what a lifetime some can last for your lifetime some can last for eternity some can last for three days some for six years but you must be armed with it. The Lord give you understanding in Jesus' name. So when I was through with my youth service and I began to pray, the Lord said, go back to Kano. When you are through with your mission in Kano, I'll give you a job. True to the word of God, he brought it to pass. 
Then we were employed. Three years later, we were posted out to every station and every place in the Federation where there were depots. And I happened to be the man that was posted to open our office at the McCordy Depot. Our superior that was in charge of all the guys that were on the field made his girlfriend in the office in charge of my own zone. The lady will not call you in the daytime. She'll call you by 11. And ask you to forward data to Abuja. That come to Abuja. All right? She called me one day and said, I should go to Lafia. And, you know, when you gain government employment, there's a civil service Bible that they give you. All right? It has, we call, we call it civil service rules. That's our Bible. All the laws are there. The laws and the appendages. <laughs> and if the government is going to move you from Macaulay to work in Lafia, there are several things, administrative, elaborate administrative arrangement that has to be made in order to make your journey successful. Like your hotel bill will be paid at, for the number of nights you spend in the Rigma Road. You also be given an allowance for leaving the comfort of your bed, your, your water bed, and the love of your beloved wife. There's an allowance. There's a, there is monetized. But destiny, we call you in the night and ask you to go to Lafia when the attendant administrative arrangements are not put in place. So I had to. And every, all of us were afraid of her. Because if she tells the ogre, and I was living in fear. A, a warrior was in fear at that time. Then I went to God and prayed about this, my fear. And the Lord told me, who gave you this job? Then I discovered that the word he gave me on the 13th day of January 2003, go to Kano. When you are true, I'll give you a job. That word was still living. That he was the one that gave me the job. So no man can sack me. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That if there's anybody I should fear on the job, it's him, not men. The thing entered me and I saw my error. I allowed his living word, whose lifetime was still effective, whose wavelength was still consistent, I allowed it to slip out of my hand and I went to battle without that piece of my armor. Do you understand? Now, I want you to do something for me. You know, my leave has finished. This is my last service with you. I'll be going back tomorrow. But I'll be here at the end of the month anyway. This is what I want to leave with you. Please go back Get your diary. Are you, are you consistent? When God speaks to you, write it down. Go back and use the next three days to read all the things God has spoken to you. And you will discern that many of the words he has spoken to you, their wavelengths and their lifetimes are still on right now. But many times you went to fight. You went to sell and buy. You went to transact without the consciousness of those words. You were like a man without an armor on the battlefield. The Lord bless you and keep you. And cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance over you. And grant you peace. In Jesus name. Now there are various things we are going to do. Uh, during the environment of our next conference. Hallelujah. I've been pleading uh, with the Lord to give us some permission to begin to teach some things. But I trust that we are mature now to be able to handle some strong bone, some bones, spiritual bones. And we'll take our time to lay precept upon precept and line upon line. Many of us have gone to fight without an armor. Because you left this living word that God spoke to you to sleep by. And then demons 
started harassing me. Destiny harassed me for a long time. And when God reminded me that he was the one that put me there, I was waiting for her next call. And then thank God she said, I should go to Lafia. So I said, all right. According to page 36 of civil service rules, an officer of my distinguished cadre will be saddled to another city with several preferential treatments. <laughs> <laughs> my God. I quoted it and I began to draw out inferences and the implication of the compressed legal position of the issue. She stopped calling me. There are several places you have run away from me where God spoke six years ago and that is what covered that event. But you went there without an armor. May the living word of God remain alive in your heart and in your consciousness. And may it protect and preserve you in the evil day. I now found out that in the school of the spirit, keep the word alive. Please help me tell your neighbor that. Keep the word alive. Now I can go on and on. I don't want to compromise the time. On and on. God, I fasted one time. I prayed for a long time, prayed for a long time. Somehow, I overfasted. So I became sick. All right? So I believe Jesus just wanted to comfort me, so he appeared to me. And when he appeared to me, he lifted up his hand like this, and from here to here became a screen. And he was showing me Benue State, this mission field. And if I tell you that I've seen some of your faces before, I know you'll not believe me. There are many secrets I've not told you. Hallelujah. And I began to see the mission to Benue. And then, because I read Kenneth Hagin's book about encounters, and he said, if Jesus appears to you and you ask Jesus, sorry, can you confirm that you are the one? He will not be angry. He will even be excited. So, I wanted a confirmation. The things, because what Jesus told me, that I, I didn't say I doubted, but I felt it was impossible. He spoke to me, he said, I have prepared your wife and the way you are going now, you will not miss it. I don't know how that is a sign of which camera. That time when I say I saw that goddess, that goddess that I liked. You know the words he spoke to me? The lady you went to see in Joss, is she prepared? Because he told me that I have what? Prepared. That means before 2002, my wife was not prepared. So God was not under obligation to make me know her. Just in case you feel it's time. Alright? It may be that the person he made for you is not yet prepared. That's why you have not seen it. You get it? But in 2002, on the 20th of October, he told me that I prepared your wife. So he didn't use something that was present. He used something that was future as a sign. Are you still with me now? So when I was going for that goddess, the word he spoke to me when I inquired, why didn't you allow me? He didn't answer. And then after a while, he answered, is the person prepared? So I now saw that my eyes open based on that parameter that God gave me as a basis of what? I found that her anger made her disqualified. Do you get that now? And do you know that after God spoke that word, three ladies desperately wanted me to be involved with them. But through that mark, prepared, 
prepared it was easy for me to navigate in the waters of life whereas i did not like my wife's complexion and i didn't like her tribe but i could not deny one thing she was prepared the lord did not say i will marry a model a film star he didn't say it will be beyonce that the the wavelength of the hips we have a natural balance he didn't tell me that he said what <laughs> he said i'm a preacher my mouth is sweet there's something there if we keep talking it will be nine o'clock he put oil one oil on the mouth <laughs> prepare it means that that living world was still what walking the reason why i went to the goddess was because i lost the world i was not watching over the world just like god watches over his words to fulfill it i was no longer watching over that critical defining that critical wisdom world i wasn't watching over it. and that was why i got into the wrong place. Do you understand it? Friends, some of you today are about to get married. And maybe there are one or two people you don't know. Go back to your diaries. There's a stray word that you may not have been able to apply or attach to anything over the years. It might be. The living world that you were supposed to make as much a part of you as your own beating heart. The Bible says the word of God is living. And my prayer is let those words that are alive live within your heart and in your consciousness. It is when it is alive in your consciousness that it becomes your light all right it becomes your light it becomes the uh, the apparatus with which you try things in your seasons and people will see that you make minimal mistakes your relatives will say let's wait and see you know a pastor told me in this time say let's see the outcome of what you are doing what was my cry he walked into the hall and I was preaching about John on the Isle of Patmos. And John gave us his prophetic credentials. Those days the prophet did not just declare himself to be one except he had credentials. And John was our companion in tribulation. He was our companion in the patience of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I began to say, someone that doesn't like tribulation cannot be God's spokesman. Because in speaking for God, demons, principalities will turn circumstances against you. So if you are afraid of tribulation, it means you don't even have stature to speak for God. Meanwhile, the pastor has started three churches in this town and closed them down. So he felt I was preaching that stuff because he was there just to slight him and god knows my he i don't know where he got my phone number from he started sending me text message or insults and all of that he did that for two months then after two months he now started sending text messages that we'll see where you end he started a fourth church church died then now started a fifth one dream center in wadata i don't know one day we woke up and the signboard was no longer in place. Then after that he ran out. And he didn't care to check if we were still where he left us. We did not come by sentiments. There's a living word that we are working on. I don't know whether God sent him, but if God sent him and he ran away, it means he has forsaken forsaking the mercies of God because the mercies of God are true to us when we take sides with the word of God I didn't fight him I didn't reply his text messages but I knew 
he lied. Because the great one that said, raise me a remnant in this generation, came to me on the 20th of October to show me Makodi. That one is still alive. Let those words live in you. In the name of Jesus. That is my closing remark for this season. And we will be back again in the month of May to climb higher on this mountain of the Spirit until the least among us become as strong as David. It doesn't matter what you call your predicament. As we walk in the light, as he is in the light, suddenly you begin to see that the weights will be dropped and your destiny will be realized. Don't say I've wasted time. Remember, eternity doesn't recognize time and Samson was perfected in one day. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.